Okay. So we're going to review a little bit about diabetes in type two and what that actually means. So we're gonna talk about reading some nutrition labels. And then I put together some slots, like if you normally eat this, this is gonna be a better option. Um, and then talk about some smart shopping things and some additional resources for you guys. Okay. So I know you guys have seen this graph like a million times, but it is so important to see the way that these different components that we eat daily affect our blood sugar. Um, as you can see, whenever we eat carbohydrates, just straight carbohydrates, so just eating a slice of bread, just eating um, potato or low bowl of mac and cheese, it's gonna make it spike really high, really quickly. And then it's gonna come down really quickly. So it's not leaving you satisfied because as soon as it comes down, your body's going to signal you, hey, I need to eat again. Um, I did not get the nutrients I need. Now my blood sugar is down. Um, eating protein, which is this yellow one in the middle, see, it makes it go up, but it takes three to four hours for it to spike um, versus that immediate spike. Um, and then we have fat, which actually takes about six to eight hours to break down. Um, and so when we combine those, it kind of helps keep that carbohydrate from going up as much. It's going to balance it out, um, especially when we include fiber. I cannot find a graph that includes what fiber does, but we'll talk about why that's super important to implement um, when we're eating different foods. Do we have any questions about this? Anyone's like, I have a CGM. Some of you might, or you've seen your blood sugar on a graph and things like that. So sometimes it might look at it when you're eating, you can kind of tell what your habits are. Okay, um, I love this quote. Um, a person's belief in their capabilities is more motivating than the objective truth of one's abilities. So basically, if you believe in yourself, your belief in yourself is more powerful than what you're actually able to do. So if you feel like you're able to take control over what you're eating, it's going to make you feel a little bit better. And those small wins aren't the better ones. Like I know when I have a good blood sugar day, yeah. it makes me motivated for the next day. I'm like, I did really good. I did good. We got to go for a streak. Because um, you also feel good. Okay. I'm sure that your doctors have talked to you about what your target blood sugar range should be. But just as a reminder, uh, before meals, or as you're fasting blood sugar, ideally it's gonna be somewhere between 70 and 130. Um, and then two hours after meals, between 140 and 180. And um, so this is two hours after you ate because it, your blood sugar is going to go up, but it should be coming back down. Now, if it's staying too high, um, like over 180 for more than a couple hours, then we might need to adjust um, the portion sizes, maybe the portion was just too much. Maybe the label was misread. Um, maybe the it was one slice of bread is 35 carbs and you thought it was two. And you're like, oh no, no, I've got to deal with my high blood sugar. So just take note of those things. Um, also, we also know that four things that contribute to high blood sugar are sleep, diet, exercise, and stress. So if you have been stressed and stressors on the body could be a, Pain um, and illness, whether that's chronic or you know a cold or allergies, that's going to make your blood sugar go up. So just be mindful of those things um, when you're getting those readings. So sometimes it could be a portion size needs to be altered, but sometimes there's something else going on. Oh, and being high dehydrated. My doctor is always like, make sure that you're hydrated because I don't want to have to retest you because you didn't drink water before you came. And then our goal for at bedtime is between 100 and 140. Now, going to bed with a good blood sugar range is going to help ensure that when you wake up, it is not as high. Um, there is some, of, I don't know, has anyone heard of the dawn phenomenon? Mm -hmm. I'm sure we've all experienced that at some times. Sometimes this can help alleviate some of the dawn phenomenon as you're consistently going to bed at this time. And plus when your body is not fighting those high blood sugars, it can actually focus on rest and restoring your body versus it fighting itself, trying to bring your blood sugars down all night. And then you wake up and you're still tired. You're still exhausted, you know, headaches, all those fun things, not fun things that happen when you wake up with high blood sugar. <clears throat> and the target ranges that we're trying to move towards um, everyone that's in this program is diabetic. So their blood sugars are 
whenever you got your A1C, it was greater than a 6.5. When your blood sugar is lower than a 6.5, then you are considered a controlled diabetic. You are less likely to have um, interventions needed, like going through diabetic ketoacidosis, um, protecting your heart health, kidney health. Um, a reduction of your A1C by 1% can reduce your complications by 35%. So even if your blood sugar or your A1C was like a nine, even if you only brought it down to an eight, that's still a significant decrease in potential issues that you might have. So progress is progress is progress. Um, personally, my A1C when I first got diagnosed, it was like upwards of 15. And then we eventually bring it down. And sometimes life events happen where, you know, they go up and sometimes it's a, it's an ongoing battle and as our bodies change, sometimes we have to adjust our eating patterns or, or what we're doing. So um, I know sometimes we can get really caught up in the numbers and oh my numbers, but they're really uh, metrics they are capturing information and then we just gotta figure out what it's telling us. Like that was maybe not a best lunch choice or actually maybe I am coming down with a cold. Maybe I should switch over to my um, sick day food. I know that, um, our blood sugars always tend to be higher than when we are sick. So implementing some of these things we're going to learn that are like lower carb are definitely going to be ideal for those days. Because there might be some days that you can have a normal portion of spaghetti with your salad and, and everything else you've got going on, your blood sugar is good. But on a day that you know your blood sugar has been high, we just want to help ourselves out and maybe just go with that lower carb option or mix the two. So we're not just fighting an uphill battle going into the next day and the next day. I'm sure you guys have seen this number here. Does anyone have any questions about these so far? Okay, so I know you guys have seen this again, but we want to make sure that 50% of what you're consuming are fruits and vegetables. Um, I know you guys have heard of the nine inch plate method. Um, I'm like a, a hands person. I like to use my hands for measurements. So ideally that's two handfuls of veggies. Uh, your carbs is going to be about your fist. And then your protein is going to be about your, your palm size. So whether that's fish, chicken, pork, you know, lean steak, whatever that's going to be. And I know, you know, some people are like palm sized. Can I have like multiples? Um, no, you don't want to do that. You just want to make sure it's full and balanced because when it is balanced, you're going to feel better for longer. You are going to get more nutrient value out of what you're eating. Um, and it's going to reduce the amount of snacking. Um, I'm terrible about eating food and then like, oh, I want some sweet, I want some extra and one like that. So whenever we balance our diets um, and what we're eating, it helps decrease those things because most food cravings are your body trying to get a certain uh, nutrient. So when we're craving salt or we're craving sugar or certain things, it's because our body needs energy or because we need uh, magnesium or these certain things. So our body tries to trigger us into eating those certain things. It's just paying attention to what it's trying to tell you. Okay, so we talked about reading nutrition facts. Whenever we're re grocery shopping and we're looking at, is this gonna be a lower carb option or not? We definitely wanna look at the label. One of the biggest things that you wanna make sure you're looking at is the portion size. Um, so is it two pieces of bread? That is this, is it one piece? Um, but this is, an op this is a standard, Tortilla, I'm going to put the brain on there, but the standard tortilla, this is the nutrition fact. So you can see that this one was actually one tortilla, 37 grams of carbs. Basically, it has no fiber, or like virtually no fiber. There's only one gram of fiber. And then over here, this is a lower carb tortilla. Um, we can see it actually does have 15 grams, so it is significantly lower. But you see this dietary fiber here, that's 11 grams. Science now tells us that we can actually take the dietary fiber and subtract it from carbohydrates, and that's going to be your net carbs. So this is actually four grams of carbs. So you can have two or three, you know, talk, you know, tacos or whatever you're making with there, and you're actually going to get a lot because that dietary fiber is what helps your body not absorb as many carbs. It keeps it moving, keeps you fuller for longer. Um, most grocery stores have low carb tortilla options. Um, it's just a matter of like looking at which one's your favorite. There's not a preferred brand. I just say look at the ingredients because 
some brands will be sold out. Your favorite one, I don't want you to get stuck to one brand. You're like, oh, they don't have it. I'm not going to make a healthy food choice. You can absolutely make the healthy food choices as long as you're reading the labels. So here's another one for pasta. This is a standard spaghetti noodle pasta. Um, this was about, they said the serving was, you can't see it, but it was about um, half an inch uncooked. Right, so I was saying, you know, maybe not much, not very much. 37 grams of carbs. Okay, so there's like four grams of fiber, so it's about 33 grams of carbs, but still that's, it's not very much pasta. It's not gonna be very filling. Even if we are loading zucchini and yellow squash and things in our in our sauce, our body still needs carbs. Um, and if you're not satisfied, you're just gonna eat another helping and then we're gonna end up in the spiral. But here is um, a low carb pasta. Um, this is 19 grams of carbohydrates. Um, for about two ounces, which two ounces uncooked, it's about you know that much, but it's about half the grams of carbs, and it has 12 grams of dietary fiber, and that's what helps make it lower carb. So even if you see something that might be higher carb, definitely look at the dietary fiber. It's like your big key indicator of what it's going to look like. Is it gonna go like this or is it gonna go? like this. Um, that's the reason that uh, whole wheat bread is better than white bread um, is because it has more fiber in it. And so like whenever you process the white bread, you know, they're processed. So they're grinding everything down. All the fibrous parts of the wheat are taken out. Um, it's bleached and then it's processed into bread. Okay. So this is 19 carbs. Yes. Okay. And so the, the fiber, which is 12, Brings that 19 down or what? Seven. Seven? Seven. So <clears throat> definitely watch your body and how it responds to it. But having that high fiber is if you are counting your carbs. So some people um, count them by grams. Some people count them by um, two. I have two carbs per meal. Um, that's the serving size. Um, it just depends on how you want to do it. I'm a big numbers person. Um, so I like to actually like add it together. Yes. But the, the carbohydrates, wouldn't it? The, they're different from the tortillas to that. Mm -hmm. Couldn't you, I'm just saying, couldn't you cut up tortillas or just make your own noodles with less carbs? Yes, you can. And we're going to talk about some ways that you can do that or some alternatives. Okay. Just because we're on the pasta, and I know everyone loves pasta, we're getting a lot of squash. Here are some actual some options that you can do. So this is a brand that I really like, um, but they have this new like protein penne, um, and it has I think it was like twenty five grams of carbs of protein for this. So you're getting fiber and protein in this. It's a low carb option. Um, we also have I thought this was awesome. This is actually in the frozen section. So of course, we want to eat fresh produce as much as possible. Um, the closer it is to its like natural form, the more fiber it's going to have, the more nutrients, of course, but sometimes we don't have time for all that. And getting a frozen bag of spaghetti squash is going to be more beneficial than stopping at McDonald's on the way home. Your body still, it's still going to be more beneficial. Um, so I think like this spaghetti yeah, so it's spaghetti squash. So I think you guys received some of them in the last couple of distributions. So it looks like a it's like a big yellow squash, and you cut it in half, and when you roast it, it turns when you take a fork and run it through that, it turns yeah, into I, I put spaghetti squash. Yeah. I've never seen it in a bag. Yeah, they have it in a bag. Yeah, they have it in a bag now. They did not used to do that. And so if you don't have time to sit there and like get everything. Sometimes it's just nice to have that in the fridge as like a quick, I know my body's gonna feel good about eating this and I'm getting spaghetti squash. And you can eat, so it's five grams of carbs per serving. Which is really important, um, really. So yeah, so you can eat quite a bit of that. Um, you know, be mindful of the carbs that are in your sauces, of course, because as we know, spaghetti sauce does have sugar in it. So be mindful of, that's one thing that they don't always teach about. Any type of sauce, like barbecue sauce, ketchup, no, to be yeah. mindful Most that those are going to have carbs or carbs because they have sugar in them. Um, so if you're eating an option like this, the spaghetti uh, sauce is not going to have that much of an impact because you're not having noodles and yes. the sauce. 
right? And of course, the next thing is to make your own sauce, but that's not always realistic for everyone. Um, but it's like a happy medium. You can also add more fiber to your sauce by, I like to blend up spinach and carrots and kind of like whatever we have on hand, you know, because mm -hmm. he doesn't see it. You know, just blend it in there. It's in there. He doesn't know because um, he's a little particular about some veggies, but we all are. Um, and then this chickpea pasta. So this is actually a really good pasta for mac and cheese. We're talking about how you like mac and cheese. Uh -huh. So I have found some good recipes where they took half cauliflower and half noodles. Not everybody wants to do that. This is still going to be a great option. Um, it's low sodium, great source of protein, great source of iron. Um, so this is for two ounces, 14 grams of protein. Um, and only six grams of sugar, eight grams of fiber, which is still going to be so definitely more. Huh? That's a lot for two ounces. It is a lot for two ounces. And so it's going to make you feel better. Um, there's also magnesium, which we know is good for our muscles and makes us feel good. So these are just some things to get, you know, if you're. So is that in a frozen thing or in a box? So this one, the chickpea pasta, you're going to find in the pasta aisle. Okay. Um, they usually will have different sections on different pastas. So just go mm -hmm. over it. More expensive than pasta? Um, it depends on the brand. Um, and it depends on the branding. So you might see something that's branded as like low carb or keto. It might be good for you, but it might also be a price markup. That's why I just go by the ingredients because these things could have the exact same ingredients, but you're paying five dollars more for a pretty box. Which, if that's what you want to do, that's absolutely fine. Uh, but they have different brands to choose from, so you can find which ones work for you. Um, but this is going to be in the frozen section, and then these would be in the. Okay. So I actually have some slides that I made. We're going to talk about some cool options that we can sub out. So um, white rice, a lot of us eat a lot of white rice. Um, quinoa is a really good option. Have you guys ever heard of quinoa before? No. Okay, it's a grain. Um, you can get it in the same aisle as um, rice or beans, lentil, all those dry things. Um, it has, it's a whole protein and it has a ton of fiber in it. So I've seen people eat this there's a lot of ways to eat this. I've eat it, eaten it plain as a side. I've also put quinoa in my omelet. I know it sounds weird, but it's really small and I needed a little bit of carbs. So I have some spinach and it just kind of buffs up the omelet instead of like potatoes or something and like a breakfast potato. Yeah, the quinoa. Um, you can also have it for breakfast, just like a breakfast cereal. You can have it warm, you can add some almond milk or peanut butter and berries to it. You can kind of get creative and sub it out a bit. It's also really good in soups, um, but it's a good option. So another option for white rice, if you don't want to try quinoa, is cauliflower rice. So you can get cauliflower and shave it yourself. You can also buy bags of cauliflower rice that have already been uh, broken down. And those will be in the frozen section near where the spaghetti squash was. Yeah, they say that you can make that uh, your macaroni instead of Yeah. Oh, a, a trick that I found, you can actually, um, if you're making mashed potatoes, you can do like two thirds potatoes and one third cauliflower or half and half. Because when it's all mixed together and you have your, you know, your herbs and everything mixed together, it's still the same consistency um, if it's all cooked all the way through. And then you can kind of you know, trick yourself. I mean, if you have to, unless you love cauliflower, but I'm one of those people, I like cauliflower, like raw, and I'll just eat it like that. Um, but cauliflower rice is a great option, uh, especially if you're having something that might have carbs in it, you can kind of substitute this out. Um, they also make cauliflower pizza crust. So if you, I mean, sometimes you're like, you know, I just want pizza. Um, yes, so they'll make them. So you can actually just buy the crust that's just on its own. But they also have pre-made pizzas that you know you just go put in the oven, and it's a cauliflower. They have very low carbs, really low, uh, really high in fiber, um, and you can actually enjoy the couple slices because pizza is the one thing that I can't bolus for or get my bush in right afterwards. Like it, it's just one of those things I have to be careful with or kind of deal with the consequences. So um, having a low lower carb pizza is really good. In some places, like 
you know, the rooftop in Broken Arrow and some other pizza place like Domino's or one of them. They have a cauliflower yes, option. They have a cauliflower option mm-hmm. at a couple of the pizza places you just have to check for. It. Like yeah. There, there's a, there's several of them in that um, Papa Murphy's that you take it home and pick it yourself. That must have been what it was. Uh, I couldn't remember yeah. if it was. I've never tried it, but they do have cauliflower um, pizza there too. Yeah. So Good. that's one thing to, to do. To look at. And absolutely. as long as you, it, it's just because it's a vegetable first, it's a little harder to get crispy, mm-hmm. but they do a pretty good job on it. It's not bad. Um, I have like a pizza pan, mm-hmm. and you know, if you have those, they're great. If not, yeah, it, it is what it is. You can also like heat it up, but then you can like in the oven, if it's not as crispy as you want on the bottom, you can put it in the pan. Tiny bit of olive oil, just a little bit, a little bit, yeah. and crisping it. It's still going to be better for you than <clears throat> oh, no. regular pizza, right? And the whole goal is we don't want our diets to be restrictive. We're told we can't have this, we can't have this, we can't have this. We can have a lot of things though. And so sometimes we just got to train our thinking a little bit differently or get creative. Um, you you may- can also do one. I'm sorry. You yeah, can okay. also do one. And I have, I have to look at the recipe. I don't, I, I've got it at home. But I don't know if you've heard, if you've seen, Keto talks about chaffles. Is it chaffles? It's a cheese-based, cheese and egg-based crust. So basically what you would want to do there is make yourself like a small one. You don't want to make a huge one because it's it's going to take time on everything. It's about this big. You can put them in a waffle maker. You can do everything. And literally it is cheese and egg. And it just kind of puffs up like a little souffle. It puffs it up and it goes ahead and crunches it out there. It's like a waffle. So they have you, you, and I know it's chocolate. I'll look it up and make sure. Yeah. But what they do is. Send it to me or put put it in the Facebook. They put all, like you can have an Italian one. So you would do that. that And you would come back and put a little bit of sauce. You would put a little bit of meat or whatever you wanted. Maybe a little bit more cheese and heat it up. And then literally you have. A really low carb. I mean, you have like four carbs in the whole thing. If you, you know, that, that might be something you can soft. have a couple extra servings. So yeah, so you can have them. They have them for or sandwiches or like I'll put it on the members. Yeah, and, definitely share with the um, on the member group because it's it started out just being everybody called it a keto thing, but it's I've had them and it's really kind of addictive. Mm-hmm. Um, I because you it's just a snack. Mm-hmm. I want something crunchy. It's like I want to have an ego with butter on it. Yeah, now that's not nutritional in any fashion. No. So if you take one of these and you, you can do that, it and then just let it be a little warm. I don't have to put butter on it, and it's still a crunch. There is a waffle cheese. mix that has protein in it. It's like keto uh-huh. friendly. Um, so I like that one. And as long as you're not eating that waffle with butter on it naked. <laughs> So I call it naked carb, you know, partner it with like some almond butter or some peanut butter, and then you're having some fats and um, something else to kind of fill you with it, or even some peanut, I put peanut butter, peanut on my butter? Sandwich, but I, I, I found a low sugar peanut butter and because they add a lot of peanut butter. Butter. Because you've got keto. you've got keto all over the world that, um, you can we even done some teriyaki 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 um marinade mm-hmm. but it's zero sugar yeah it, they have a lot of more options so out there it's just zero sugars out there take it you know sometimes it does take some time to find the right one that you okay, like and my suggestion is to try it's just slipping out one or two things at a time sometimes it's really hard for us to just do a full overhaul unless you're one of those people where you're in all or nothing. But the point is like sustaining this dietary change for a long time. So you feel good for a long time. So maybe we're just going to try swapping out a couple of things at a time. Okay. So um, you guys get sweet potatoes a lot. That's because they're really high in fiber, um, high in (coughs) vitamins, um, and they're better for you than red and yellow potatoes um, because their glycemic load is the glycemic index is not going to make it go up as high. Of course, the portion sizing is different. Um, so you have to make sure you're following that, but it's definitely way better for you than regular potatoes. And if you want to take that a step further, 
you can actually swap out potatoes for radishes. I learned this recently. You can chop them up, or so you can uh, you can chop them up like this, and you can roast them, and they taste like roasted potatoes, and they're kind of like spicy and peppery. You can also chop up. You, did you guys get some of those big ones? I like okay so they're really good raw but you know those big ones so you can chop them up like french fries and toss them in some oil and roast them in the oven mm -hmm. low carb french fries well yeah. and if you have an air one of the oh, air fryers that's we next could level take in the sweet potatoes and we just put them in fry sheets. i mean just mm -hmm. cut them up and put them in there with a little bit of salt and pepper and that's it it's so good and you can make a lot oils or anything on it. and you can make quite a few um portions of that you know maybe the next morning i'm having a little bit of sweet potato fries and like some eggs and like some spinach or whatever that might look like um but yeah the radishes i love them as the fries because it has such a good flavor and i'm a potato girl like i told you guys so i will just eat it all day every day so you do you, you think you can roast them and they take up the taste do what, love me? You said you just roast them and they taste like potatoes. They'll taste a little bit different, but like the texture is going to be the same. Yeah. You know how the radishes they have more of like that bitter bite to them. Yeah. But whenever you're pairing it with like salt and pepper, I think when it brings it out, it tastes even better than a pepper. So do you do you put them like in a half a tablespoon of oil and then put them in salt and pepper? I say about half a tablespoon. I don't really measure as much because I, in my brain, I know, but um, depending on what I'm doing, just enough to coat it and then I'll toss it in there and then put my seasonings, toss it and put it in the oven. I think I did about, I'm like 400 for about 10, 15 minutes. I kind of start watching it after about 10 because they'll burn real quick, but they're really good. Uh, definitely try that because you can do them like fries or like this. Um, you can even like make hash browns with them if you really want to. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, so if you want to take some potatoes and shred them, or if you want to add radishes, so then it's, it's, it's like half and half, and you're getting the added nutrition benefits, you're getting um, more fiber. Um, it's just a way to like integrate what we're already eating. So how can we take what we're already eating and make it more nutritional? How can we make it more filling? And how are we going to make it um, where we feel better for longer? Um, so we talked about spaghetti. I gave you some good like noodle options, but this is uh, veggies as noodles are going to be your best option when it comes. Um, at the veggie prep class we had, I did show you guys that noodler um, and you can find them pretty much everywhere. They're usually like seven to $10 and you can take zucchini, carrots, anything, and you just put it through and it ribbons it like this and you can boil it or you can saute it up is phenomenal for uh, stir fries, spaghetti. Um, you can bake it. Um, you can even, instead of doing it like this, if you want to do a lasagna, you can do like a like a straight one and use that as noodles. Um, eggplant's also really good for that too. Um, but those are like some good options. Okay, so um, instead of a hamburger bun, you might do lettuce. They do have low carb buns. So if you go to the grocery store, they are going to have a lower carb option. But if you say, no, like I want actual fries as my carb, um, I don't want to have the bun because you kind of have, sometimes you have to choose. But if I have a lettuce wrapped on my burger, I can have my, my little fries. Or maybe I'm having a salad and a burger, but I really want to share this piece of cake with somebody or something like that. Um, it just gives you a little more freedom to figure out where you want your carbs to come from, especially when you're getting all those vegetables. You know, it's a ton of fiber. Also, Five Guys and I think Smashburger, um, they also have lettuce wraps on the menu. So you can get that instead of a bun. Jimmy John's will do that. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, Jimmy John's does their sandwiches as uh, wraps. Um, I think Payway, you can get lettuce wraps of course, you have to be careful. It's lots of sugars and and again, this is one that you to do sandwiches because truffles then truffles on burgers. Oh, that would because be so that's good. A, again, it gives you a sandwich spot. Mm -hmm. But hear me out, my member fans, bell peppers are fantastic because they have a little bowl, so it catches everything as it falls. Um, I also like bell peppers as a, if you guys are like deli meat sandwich lakers, um, 
I said that a little funky, but you can put your deli meat, your other veggies, your sauces in there and have your bell pepper as your bun. And you're getting iron, you're getting vitamin C. Uh, peppers have more vitamin C than oranges do. Um, so it's a great thing to integrate in your diet. And then you can maybe have fruit with it instead of you know having to limit your carbs. You can have more if you're just mindful of where your carbs are going. Because I could easily eat, drink all my carbs in one sitting for the whole day with sweet tea and or soda or whatever that looks like. But I mean, if you are going to have that little thing of sweet tea, then maybe we're doing a lettuce burger and some radish fries, and then we can have our little sweet tea. You see, um, white bread for whole bread, for whole wheat bread or spelt bread, anything that has a whole grain, right? Anything that's been processed and broken down is going to make our blood sugars go up. Our bodies like to do the work of breaking down foods. It helps us burn calories and it helps us um, absorb all the nutrients that are supposed to be there. So you're saying whole grain is not good for you? It is good for you. Okay. Sorry if I did not say that as well. What about whole grain? multi is gonna be great for you as well. It's gonna be better than white bread. So, you know, some people are particular, like rye is also a good, um, thing certain sourdoughs can be uh then he, read your labels uh read what those carbs are going to look like um but the more whole grains it has in it the more fiber it's going to have the less it's going to make your blood sugar go up and we'll talk a little bit more about fiber in a minute okay and then ice cream love ice cream of course they have no sugar ice cream sometimes they taste not so good. And I don't like sugar-free chocolate anything because it upsets my stomach a lot. Um, doing a sorbet is a great way. This is actually a watermelon sorbet. So you do it with uh, ice, frozen watermelon. So you take the watermelon, chop it up, freeze it, a uh, little bit of lime juice and salt. Um, and then it makes like a nice sorbet. Of course you can do it with bananas and like cinnamon and almond milk. You can also buy sorbet that has less sugar in it, but it is still an option. Um, but might I add that you might also eat some like salted almonds with it or some walnuts or pair it with uh, something else. So it's not like a naked carb yet again. But uh, watermelon sorbet is a great option because watermelon is really low glycemic, has a ton of water content in it. It's really good. Um, okay, milk chocolate has a lot of chocolate or a lot of sugar in it. Dark chocolate has less sugar in it, has more antioxidants in it, it's good for your blood, and it is a better option if you're going to have to, you know, sometimes you just need that chocolate, just make a better option. Um, again, you might pair it with like some dark chocolate, and I'm having some almonds or pecans, walnuts, pistachios, whatever that looks like, um, just to pair it with some more fiber. Now, cereal Cereal on this country is just bad for you all around. It is so processed and so full of sugar. Um, you're just not setting yourself up for success when you eat cereal. Um, yeah, so a better option is gonna be um, oatmeal or like a whole grain. So you might have like, there's kumut cereal. You could also do this with quinoa. So this particular oatmeal has a tiny bit of agave on it. Uh, a little butter and almond milk. And then we have got some low glycemic fruits on here, blueberries, blackberries, and raspberries. So they don't have as much sugar in them as like bananas and strawberries. You're gonna get some nutrients, plus a ton of fiber from the oatmeal. Um, sour cream. I know that a lot of recipes we might use for have a lot of sour cream in them. Greek yogurt is a great option. Um, like the non-flavored Greek yogurt. It tastes just like sour cream. You're getting a ton of probiotics, has less sugar. But I also put this reduced fat up here specifically because anything that says reduced fat, low fat on there, it basically is saying a chemical crap storm. And we just want to stay away from anything that says low fat because usually it has a ton of other additives in it. And it's just it's just not like if you're going to have the fat, let's just make sure that it's a healthy one. Um, we don't want to go low fat. But this is great. Um, you can make dip with it. You can use it for sandwiches. Um, you can add garlic, dill, onion, make a ranch dip. Um, for mac and cheese, you know, maybe instead of cream cheese, 
might use a little Greek yogurt. Um, so this is a great sugar replacement. Um, so we have the regular granulated sugar. This is called Swerve. Now this is just a brand. Um, there's also Truvia and um, quite a few options. Whenever you go to the baking aisle, you guys will see all of the options. Um, the granular sugar is gonna have the most similar texture. So if you're baking something, this is gonna be a great option because it has no carbs. Um, they also have this as a white sugar. They have a brown sugar. Mm -hmm. um, and I like these better than uh, like monk fruit's good. It has a little bit of a twang to it. This can one I found, it? huh? Can you use it in tea? You can use it in tea. Um, they also make liquid forms of this. I know I've seen them at Sprouts, but they come in like little tinctures and it's stevia and it's like raspberry flavored or caramel flavored. So if you want to put it in your coffee or your tea, yeah. instead of getting like a, like a Starbucks vanilla syrup, you can get a stevia vanilla syrup and then add that to your coffee. And maybe that's a better option. One less thing that you put sugar in that day, your coffee and you're putting stevia in there. Um, they also make smaller baths so you guys can try. Um, the last cooking demo that Jasmine did, she actually made a cake with this, a strawberry cake with it. And one slice of the whole cake had four grams of carbs in it. And it was so good. Um, and the texture was still really good as well. So I highly encourage you to get some of these replacements in because like sweet tea season is coming and no one needs to miss out on it. There's healthier options. Okay, that was my last one on this one. And to do, we are almost done, Levy. Okay, so we talked about portion size, reading the nutrition facts, fiber um, helps the body process food. It also is scientifically proven to lower that LDL cholesterol hormone. Um, so integrating fiber beans, um, they also help reduce blood sugar spikes and it'll keep you fuller for longer. Um, some benefits of eating healthy, like we've already talked about, feeling fuller after meals, increased energy, lower glucose readings, lower risk of diabetic complications, improved health metrics, decreased A1C levels, all of these great things. And I put new recipes because sometimes it's fun and you stumble on like a new favorite food. And that's always really fun because then it's less of like, you don't feel like you're punishing yourself. You feel like you're doing yourself a favor by filling your body with good food that's good for you. So whenever you're wanting to create your healthy diet, just make sure to actually have a goal in mind. It doesn't have to be a super big goal. It might just be like, I'm gonna cut out one sugary thing or I'm actually gonna meal prep for the weekend. You know, whatever that goal is, start small. Um, I like SMART goals, right? They're specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. So, you know, like, okay, this month I'm gonna get, these are the three small things I'm gonna tackle. And then you move on to the next thing. Um, also, knowledge is power. When we know better, we can make better choices. So participate in your education, whether it's come into these classes, go to YouTube, online. Um, there's a lot of knowledge out there. Of course, have discernment with where those places are coming from. There's actually a YouTube video on how to go through what is crap and what is actually uh, legitimate medical advice and information on our YouTube. Cindy did a video on that for us. It's about 10 minutes. Um, plan your meals, set yourself up for success, and also bet on yourself because you guys have the power to easily make these changes. Um, just because it's an easy change doesn't mean it's not going to be a difficult one though. So don't, don't misread me there, but also bet on yourself. You can do this. You deserve to feel better and you deserve to be in good health. Um, huh? um, you know, and even if some of our health has declined, at least day to day, maybe eating better might help alleviate some symptoms. It might help with other things that are going on and that's still progress and we want that. Um, so I just wanted to bring attention to double up bucks. Um, if anybody is SNAP eligible and gets EBT benefits, um, these are eligible for you at Oasis grocery store and the Tulsa farmers market. So what it is, is for every dollar you spend on produce up to $20 per visit, you actually get a dollar worth um, to spend. So if you went to uh, the grocery store 
say you bought $20 worth of produce, that can't be anything that has sugar or anything, which is still basic produce, um, you'll actually get 20, so if you spend $20, you'll get $20 to go towards your next shopping trip. So next time you'll get to spend $40 worth of the snap bucks, but only spending 20. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And then same at the farmer's market, um, the Brookside one and the Cherry Street one. You just go to the information booth and you'll swipe your snap card and say, I want $20 in tokens. Um, then they'll give you $40 worth of tokens for you to use. And also um, seniors that are eligible get extra tokens to buy extra food. Thank you. That's any, any questions? Um, the reason I had you guys write some of your carbs and stuff that you guys eat regularly was I was hoping you guys would look back on it and think, you know what, I learned a new, you know, this for that. Maybe I can swap out this <coughs> carb that I like eating regularly and integrate something that I learned today. And like the goal is that we're feeling better, but also you might, if you have a certain cooking style, stick with that cooking style, just integrate more vegetables. If you like eating a lot of soul food, if you like eating Asian style food or Mexican style food, whatever that is, just integrate those healthy things back into it. And then it's just a health journey, it's a stepping stone. Comments, questions, concerns, emotional outbursts. Hopefully not the last one, don't come for me.